Ketamine is a medication that has been around for about half a century. It's been used as an anesthetic medication um, in the operating room. And the biggest drawback about ketamine in the operating room in the early days is that patients had hallucinations from the use of the drug. And so it became less popular despite the fact that it was very effective in the operating room for pain relief. Ketamine is what's called a dissociative anesthetic. Um, what that means is that it's a medication that dissociates almost the mind from the body so that at the proper dose of ketamine, one can actually be somewhat awake and yet dissociated from the experience that the body is going through. So the patient will not feel the pain in the hand even though the patient knows that something is going on there. Um, ketamine went out of favor as an anesthetic except in specific emergency situations until relatively recently when it has gone through some of a resurgence. Um, ketamine's classified as an antagonist of the NMDA receptor and that doesn't have particular relevance in terms of understanding how it's being used but it does have some relevance on why it's being used. The reason that ketamine has undergone a resurgence is its use and effects in treating complex regional pain syndrome. Several years ago, a group in Germany started using ketamine by, by inducing coma in patients with severe end-stage intractable complex regional pain syndrome. They would put the patients in a coma for five days, and at the end of five days when they woke the patient up uh, from this coma, many of them who were the worst cases of CRPS were completely pain-free. About half the patients remain pain-free for up to three months and then require some additional ketamine treatment. But the fact that any medication could take the worst of the worst and tr transform them into people who were pain-free seems somewhat miraculous to those who care for or who are very familiar with complex regional pain syndrome. From that was spawned other uses of ketamine, recognizing that if through the dramatic use of a coma it could do this, maybe something far short of a coma could be effective. So we now have um, three different ways that, or even perhaps four different ways that ketamine is being used to treat these intractable pain problems. One way, as mentioned, is the coma five days be with a breathing tube in place and full monitoring um, and actually assist, uh, assisted ventilation with, with a, a ventilator. Um, the other ways are um, just a four-hour simple infusion to see what effect it has. Um, there is a sub-anesthetic 24-hour um, type infusion for extended periods of time. And then one of the more common ones, which is now being studied actually by Dr. Robert Schwartzman at the uh, Drexel University School of Medicine in Philadelphia, where he is actually giving 10 days of four-hour infusion uh, to see what impact it has on the pain. Now, preliminary data from Schwartzman's group demonstrates high efficacy in these four-hour infusions from very um, low, extremely low doses compared to what everybody else is giving. And, and patients are having remarkable results in um, double-blinded placebo-controlled studies. Um, these data will actually be published later this year uh, in a major medical journal. Um, the fact that a low-dose ketamine administered for four hours at a time for 10 consecutive days can have such a dramatic effect on on this horrible pain syndrome is very encouraging and has aroused an incredible amount of enthusiasm about the drug to the point that it is now probably being used more as an anesthetic in the operating room for certain kinds of cases than it was several years ago. Ketamine is a drug, as I mentioned, that can produce hallucinations, uh, can possibly even be toxic to the nervous system. Dr. Olney at the University of California, S San Francisco, demonstrated the, the, the potential toxicity of uh, ketamine 
and also demonstrated that uh, by use of the medication clonidine, there can be a prophylaxis uh, or prevention of the negative nervous system effect of ketamine. We've been using ketamine now um, in infusions for uh, more than four years and have been quite impressed with the results in our CRPS patients, as have many of the others around the world who are using it. At the present time, there is only one center that is um, performing the coma therapy, and that, that center is under Dr. Cantu in Monterey, Mexico. The group in uh, Germany has temporarily discontinued the ketamine coma because of a complication. I should mention that there have been two major complications from the ketamine coma um, now reported. Uh, the German group had a complication that actually required the patient to have a tracheostomy, or basically the breathing tube put in through the front of the neck. And for that reason, they are looking at their protocol and making decisions. The group in Mexico experienced a patient death on a patient who was admitted to their protocol uh, for compassionate use. The patient was a very poor risk, having multiple systemic problems and actually died during the course of therapy. The group in Mexico continues um, to use ketamine and is reporting um, marked success and we're waiting for a publication of some of their data in medical journals. There's one other use of ketamine recently that is um, newsworthy. Um, there is a company that has developed a metered dose nasal administration of ketamine which potentially could be used in the battlefield. I didn't mention at the beginning the advantages of ketamine over other anesthetics when used in a traditional sense. Um, when ketamine is used in the operating room, it doesn't suppress respirations, it doesn't lower blood pressure, and as a result, um, administration of ketamine can be safer than administration of intravenous narcotics, for instance. In the battlefield, there's a big potential for ketamine because, once again, when a let's say a soldier loses a limb or has a, a major injury, you want to give that soldier the best pain relief possible, but you don't want to compromise their breathing and you don't want to compromise their blood pressure. So ketamine can play a role here. Now, this company that is developing um, the intranasal meter dose ketamine um, believes that this will be an alternative to even establishing an intravenous line in a very acute situation that you can give ketamine safely in a metered dose through the nose, right through the mucosa of the nose before the intravenous line is even established in an emergency situation. This certainly has potential for use in emergency rooms around the country as a safe method. Now, the other complication that um, was unpopular um, related to ketamine or side effect rather than complication were the hallucinations that patients experienced. This now is counteracted with uh, the medication midazolam, which can be administered safely. So currently, I mentioned there are four ways that ketamine is being administered. One, where the patient has an endotracheal tube or a breathing tube and is being artificially ventilated, and the other three where the patient breathes spontaneously. What's imperative in all these situations is that the physician who is administering the drug have experience in anesthesia and airway management, and that the patient be fully monitored with a minimum of three and possibly four of the following. Uh, automated blood pressure cuff, um, pulse oximetry, which measures um, oxygen in the blood in real time, um, electrocardiography, and possibly even the end tidal CO2, or the, the amount of CO2 a patient is breathing out with each breath. I think what the literature that has come out over the last five years demonstrates is that ketamine is a, an effective therapy for complex regional pain syndrome that is safe when administered in an appropriate setting with appropriate monitoring.